you think you're procrastinating by watching this video? Uh, no, I'm the one who's procrastinating here. By the way, you're not going to learn a lot about 3D modeling from watching a low poly tutorial like this because in all honesty, everyone knows how to make cylinders and cubes and stuff like that. So I'm going to be quickly going through the entire modeling process in a minute or two. And then I'm going to meet you afterward to talk about how to actually make your low poly stuff look nice. So what you do is you take a cylinder and you put another one on top of it, right? And then you tell everyone that this is a tree. Why would anyone question you? And if they do question you, then just replace that cylinder with a cone. And if that doesn't work, then you still have icospheres to work with. Just make sure that you lower the subdivisions down to one when you're creating the icosphere. You can always just add in one more subdivision later on to achieve a rounded effect. And the best thing is, you can stack these on top of each other and Everyone will think, oh my god, he put so much effort in this, but it literally just takes two more seconds. For a cylinder, you can just select the top face and inset extrude, inset extrude, and easy peasy, lemon squeezy, you've got a stacked tree. Oh, and if you want to make some branches, then just add in some loop cuts and extrude it out. This is literally the only modeling step that requires half a brain in this entire video, by the way. Oh, and you can also achieve another thing with a stacked cylinder. You can just scale down the top edges and yeah, achieve this look. And if you're feeling a bit experimental, then just move the inner edges up. By the way, you're not just limited to a single or two branches, okay? You can just add branches on your branches and keep going. Also, for some reason, just duplicating and spamming spheres seems to work as well. Oh, and this beauty, this is just made by cutting a UV sphere in half and just stack them on top of each other. And finally, the one that requires the most effort is, well, this one, this amazing, lovely looking cube over here. Don't worry, the video's not over yet. See, the first time I did a low poly scene, it looked hideous, it looked horrible, and it was not more complex than this. It was literally these exact same things, but the render came out looking Garbage. I'm actually gonna show you the render right now. Well, not the exact render. I rendered it out again because I kind of remember what I messed up, right? So this is what it looked like. And then I realized, oh wait, low poly kind of requires extra work. And yes, see your modeling skills, they're not really being tested over here. The things that are being tested are your ability to do good lighting, your ability to present your scene, your ability to well do good composition and above everything else, your ability to select good materials. And I was kind of getting sick of making low poly scenes that looked like garbage. So this is me deciding that, okay, enough of that. I'm gonna make an isometric scene that doesn't look bad. So most of the color in my scene is actually coming from this thing. So you come over here to the render tab, all the way down here, color management, change the look from, well, none to very high contrast, and there you go. The second thing I did is that instead of using a flat color for my background, I used Blender's default sky texture with these settings to sort of achieve this uh, look over here. You can get a lot of different lighting conditions by just playing with these values and I highly recommend playing with them. So for example, this looks like a sunset view over here, can I get a dawn? Eh, close enough. Anyway, that's not the whole point. The point is that by playing with these values, I kind of realized, oh, okay, I can just keep these settings like this and oh my god, it looks really nice. So yeah, I'm just going to reload my file over here so you can see the settings that I have. So 10, 0, 10, and I'm using the Hosek one. Anyway, the next thing I did is I added in some reflections on this ground over here. So this ground material down here, I believe the plane, and I changed the clear code to 1 instead of zero. And that added just enough reflections under these tree trunks for it to look good. So for example, just keep an eye over here, okay? It's subtle, but it looks nice. These ones as well, actually all of them, because yeah, it's, it's, it's the same plane. The other thing I did is that at first, this scene didn't really have any rocks in it. I just wanted to make more trees, but then I realized, okay, wait, but that looks really bad. It's just monotonic. I, I would have to use a different color for the ground and stuff. And no, no, just no. So just add in rocks. Just add the rocks in. It's okay. Maybe I can make a video on rocks next. Oh yeah, and I should probably be saying this. Yes, you will be getting materials for my bathroom scene. Anyway, thanks for watching and I will end this here before I start rambling for another half hour. 
I'm gonna do those rambling videos one day, okay? Anyway, let's go.